Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and this might be news to some of you, quite a few of you actually, but uh, if you were at a Walmart lately looking for Magic the Gathering products, um, first of all, screw you, and secondly, you might have seen these. So you might be thinking to yourself, especially if your name is Max, what the fuck are those? I'd get like as loud as Max does, but I'm pretty sure he lives in a house and I live in an apartment, although I'm also pretty sure that my neighbors just got evicted. They lasted two weeks. But anyway, what actually are these? Because this is weird. I mean, if you read the bottom title, red theme booster, black theme booster, blue theme booster, I assume the other two say what you would think. That's right, color locked boosters. So there's so, so much to hit with this because this is just like huge. Now, a lot of people's snap reaction was good. I'm building a blah color deck. You know, you open a booster, you get four-fifths of cards you don't want if you're building a mono deck. And it's three-fifths if you're building a dual-color deck. I mean, it just... Why do you need these cards? But then again, like, you know, I like card pools. You know, I, I like having the cards I need in the future and currently, you know, for future commander decks or modern or whatever. And I can't predict the color of those. In fact, uh, the next time a new set is released, uh, assuming that the cards that I'm holding don't cycle out... I might need them. I might change it up and build a different deck. In fact, I will change it up and build a different deck. Now, I do tend to play blue and white and black pretty heavily, but that doesn't mean that I've never built a red deck. So it's like I, I want the cards there just, just to have them. So if you open one of these and then you decide, oh, I want to play a white deck, actually. Those look kind of fun. Well, you're, you're starting at zero then. But that said, who says, oh, I'm going to build a white deck and then just opens boosters? Like, you're just going to get the cards, the singles that you want. So is this an intermediary product where it's like, I'm going to build a white deck. I don't have the budget to just drop, you know, 20 bucks on like, what you know, whatever white mythic is popular. I could name a couple. So I'm just going to get some white cards, but I don't want to spend more than I have to. So I'm only going to get white cards. You know, that's just like, okay, you know, cool. Um... You know, you're opening blind, but it's like these are Dominaria and it's color locked. Like, how much variation could there possibly be? And you can always trade or use direct single sales to supplement whatever you open with one of these. So then it comes down to price versus what you get. And according to the very top of the packaging here, you get 35 cards. So that is bigger than an average booster by a lot. So what's the price and what's inside them? Well, before I hit that, let me just say this is a Walmart exclusive. So if you're thinking, oh, this is some amazing new product, it's going to come out. Maybe my LGS just didn't buy any, but this is a new Dominaria product. Well, yes, except it's Walmart only. I mean, it's kind of like being WPN only, except it's only Walmart, which is just stupid. Now, Walmart constantly requests special versions of people's products for them. And usually it's like some just watered down garbage quality, whatever. Like if you go to Walmart and you buy some hundred dollar set of Bose speakers, they're probably not Bose speakers. There's some garbage brand made somewhere not at Bose's factory and they just license the name or whatever. And you know who was behind that? Walmart. So are these awful? Is it just Walmart saying, okay, we want a special product. We want it to be turbo cheap and we want it to be, you know, not your core boosters. Or did they just say, we want something cheaper, screw you. Because isn't it like $4.19 for a booster at Walmart? That's above MSRP. They're usually $3.99 MSRP and usually not. I mean, I know very few stores that actually sell them for $3.99 a piece. Especially if you buy a whole box. So were they saying, we want it cheaper, we want $3 boosters. And they're like, why don't we just make up a product and give it to them and call it an exclusive. And then that'll give, get them off our backs. I suspect that that's what they did, so I also suspect that these are awful. Oh, well, actually, first I should read Wizard's statement about what these are. So uh, they said, this is something new we're trying with Dominaria in a few hundred Walmart stores. So not all of them. Uh, these are theme boosters. This is a new take on a booster pack. It's not meant to replace regular booster packs at all all so they're being unequivocal about this in fact they put comma so have no fear about that it's a new kind of pack there are five of them one for each color so they are basically already talking crap about it they're just like playing it down like this is just a thing we're trying it it's a walmart exclusive it's not replacing regular boosters don't worry about it I mean, they might as well put at the end of that, it's not even good, don't buy it. You know, that, that's the vibe I'm getting from it. 
So as you may have suspected, they go on to say these are targeted at players who are building a collection and simply want to ensure they get cards their favorite color deck can play. But this is just an odd way to phrase it. I, I don't know who wrote this or if they just copied it from some garbage marketing material that some idiot made up, but it says each pack contains 35 cards you can play in a deck of that color. Uh, yeah, and then they put in parentheses in case you're like a complete idiot. So in the blue one, you can only open blue cards, artifacts, and lands. Dot, 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 okay, and Karn. Okay. I mean, I guess that does explain a little bit more than just like, you can play white cards in a white deck, did you know that? I legitimately thought that's where they're going with that. But they mean like, oh, blue uses artifacts in Dominaria, which by the way is not true. Um, artificers can typically, you know, do stuff with artifacts, but... Not really in this set. I think white is the big equipment one. I don't know. Maybe there's just a couple that flew under my radar because nobody's playing it. So uh, they say you can open up rares and mythic rares in these packs as normal. And sometimes you'll even get two. Whoa, pump the brakes there. You're guaranteed one out of 35, but sometimes you'll even get two. They didn't say anything about three though. Now this is where it gets weird. I don't even get this. It says, unlike normal boosters, there is no set common to uncommon ratio. One pack might have six uncommons and the next one 10. Why? How, how and why? Why and how? How would the printing facility do this? Why would they do this? And why would your marketing team approve this? Or like production or whatever, whoever thinks up this nonsense. This is just stupid. That's utterly stupid. So you're guaranteed one rare or mythic, but you might get two. And then the rest are commons and uncommons. Oh, but, but to make up for the fact that everybody's going to take a dump all over this product, you could get 10 uncommons. In fact, they never said that you couldn't get 34 uncommons. I doubt you could, but hey, but it gets weirder. But the real exciting thing to me is how we've done the card collation. We worked on the collation so that there are small themes that give you deck building hooks among the commons and uncommons. Oh my god. So I guess it's not like random. It's not just they're pulling sheets and hoppers and it's, oh, look, you got a bunch. It's like, oh no, all of these uncommons work together. So we're going to put them in a row. So it's like semi stacks. So what there probably are, are like eight card cells or something like that. And they go into the pack. So you're going to probably see a lot of repeats, but the cool thing is, okay, they're cards that go together. Like it's, it's all the white cards that work with equipment and then some equipment. So it's kind of like, uh, what is that, the Deck Builder's Toolkit where you can get one of a couple like seated or semi-seated, semi-sequenced, but semi-random decks or something like that. Like there were different possibilities, but they were still predictable. You knew what cards were going to be in sequence. So they do give an example. They say, for example, in the white theme booster, if you open Danitha Capish and Paragon, you will also open auras and equipment to go with her. So it, it might be based on what rare goes in there. These mini themes can inspire someone, especially a newer or more casual player, to build up entirely new kinds of decks. And each pack is full of several of these mini themes. Uh, so I guess some are based on the rare, some are just based on each other. Like I said, it's probably little like four to eight card cells. Uh, however, this is all still done fairly randomly, and your rare or mythic always appears independent of the themes inside. Okay, they literally just said Danitha. Maybe she's an un... Oh, she is an uncommon. I keep forgetting because she's, like, amazing. Okay, so I take it back. The rare or the mythic is independent, and then there's, like, the commons and uncommons are tied together in little mini sets. That is kind of nice. I mean, it's better than cards that don't go together, and I don't think that somebody's going to be opening these packs for the value. So, I mean, it does what they say it does. It's just not a good product. But for the person that they're targeting and the people that they're interested in, or that would be interested in this product, it is a good product. So, you know, it's kind of like Deck Builder's Toolkit. Everybody says it's a terrible product, and oh, fat packs are a terrible product. Well, unless you need a book, like the poster, need a die, and need some lands, which is who they're targeting. Yeah, the um, Planeswalker decks aren't very good products. They aren't even very good decks, necessarily. I actually think they are kind of good products, but arguably they're not. 
But for somebody who's like, I need a cheap playable standard deck, it is good. And that's who they're targeting. I mean, not every product they release is for everybody. So they just said it's for the casual, newer, blah, blah, blah person. And yeah, these probably are pretty good for them, actually. I mean, I can't really think of a better starting point other than somebody just giving you a deck or helping you build a deck out of your own bulk, which is kind of what this is. So value goes out the window, but the, the actual value is like it's playable. So get this. Okay. They, they added one more thing in case you're not like quite one over, which I'm kind of not myself. Find a friend each by one shuffle in 25 lands. Holy crap. That's a lot of the appropriate color. Don't look at the cards and battle. <laughs> Don't look at the cards. I love that. You just shuffle it in. Like, you know what color you bought, and then you have no idea what the deck does. That sounds so stupid I would do it. I like really stupid random crap, okay? But just think about that, though. Besides doing specifically that, um, you could buy one of these. It's 35 cards. You shuffle in 25 lands, or like 23 if you want to be proper, if it curves to six. I mean, and then just go get two more cards or just play with 58. And then you've got a deck. And it's standard legal, and it's all from one set. So, And it's got a little bit of artificial synergy added in. It's not bad if you really don't like the options for the Planeswalker decks. I mean, it's, it's interesting. So the question is, what do they cost? Because that is going to almost exclusively determine if I give this a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Well, the article doesn't say the MSRP. I can't find this product at all on walmart.com. I can't find it on eBay. And I had trouble finding even references to it on the internet at all, anywhere. In fact, one source said it was a $12.99 MSRP. That cannot possibly be right. Um, but two other sources, I don't know anything about them. I, I, there was no citation, no picture of a receipt, nothing. But they both said $6.99 for an MSRP. So normal boosters MSRP is $3.99 and this is $6.99. So it's not quite double and you get 35 cards instead of uh, 15 depending upon how you want to count it. You still only get one rare, but I mean, or mythic, but there's, well, or you could get two though. You could get two. That is an option. And quite a few of the mythics and a couple of the rares are worth pretty damn close to $6.99. So... Even honestly, value wise, you could pull some good stuff and there are some crazy uncommons in this set. But the thing is though, what if these literally cannot contain Forebearer's Blade or it cannot contain uh, like Danatha or whatever? What if they took a really, really high end powerful and either past, current or future hyper expensive uncommon and did not put it in any of the packs? Because it sounds like that is possible. Well, then you can't really do like a, is it worth it type of thing. Um, but the problem is this sounds so low variance and so low randomization that if somebody thinks that they can make a profit from it, they're probably correct. They could probably do it on a pretty low scale, like a small scale, and they could just go to Walmart and just buy 100% of the blue ones. And that's it. Leave all the rest on the shelf. Well, if Wizards is going to be like Wizards, because, you know commander sets anthologies and everything else they've ever done um they're going to make you buy you know one of each you'll probably get a pack of like three 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 of every color so walmart can't just call them up and say we need more white ones they sold out we need more blue ones they sold out they're like oh sorry they come in packs of five. Oh well but maybe they can though because it sounds like these are pre-selected they're cell based and you put the micro cells together and you get these little pseudo random packs and then you just run off a full rare and mythic sheet and split it up. Uh, and that's the thing though, the rare and mythic will be on color, but it has nothing to do with the rest of it. So the potentially or almost definitely number one money card will be the rare or mythic. Now the other thing, it sounds to me like you cannot get a foil. Now it doesn't say you cannot get a foil, but it doesn't say you can. And I feel like they would have said it if you can. So honestly, for that small of a price, when you technically get a playable deck, I don't know. I don't know. You get like the, the seed for an okay synergistic block constructed style deck. That's all one color. You could play mono. That's perfect for a new player. And assuming you can get your hands on some lands, which I mean, just ask any other player or just go buy them for like five or 10 cents a piece or whatever. Assuming that, I mean, these are way cheaper than the Planeswalker decks and a little bit better value, I guess. 
I mean, it's not fully pre-made, and it's probably going to be a worse deck, but then again, saying something would be worse than one of the pre-made Planeswalker decks is really saying something. Those things are pathetic. And of course, don't forget, those are, uh, I think they're $14.99 MSRP, but they come with two boosters, so they are kind of the same price. But this is dual purpose. It's not meant to be a deck. It just can be, and you're supposed to modify it, which is honestly what you're supposed to do with the Planeswalker deck anyway. So... I do like the Planeswalker decks as a product, and the fact that this isn't like 12, 13, 14 bucks, which would be just ridiculous, it's a pretty good card value, it's a pretty good return, it's pretty good as far as here's just cards you need, you don't have to overbuy and feel overwhelmed and read too much and, you know, learn green specific stuff if you only want to play white. It's less intimidating, it's more centralized, but it's still random, it's still exciting to open, I guess. I don't know, a lot of people had some very negative reactions to this, but I just don't see it. I haven't heard a reason that isn't exaggerated or wrong. Now, the one thing, though, that people are completely legit about, why the hell is this only being sent to Walmart? And get this, okay, in the same article, it says, we really want feedback on what players think of these, so we're doing a small release here. Okay, here is Walmart, apparently. Or maybe by here they mean now or whatever. Uh, if it goes over well, we can add them to the product lineup for all game stores. Come Spaghetti, which is the code name for the fall set. Or as everybody knows at this point, Return to Return to Ravnica. And they want to take lessons from here to make tweaks before then. Well, some people's feedback and, and lessons and tweaks are don't do it. So let me think what this would do from a market standpoint. Because remember, I sell singles. I think it's bad. I think... Um, it, it it will have to be bought in even numbers. So if everybody here is the better value or the better deck, the better power, the better synergy, the better whatever overall return is from white, which in this case it probably is, um, that one will sell out and the local gaming store will get stuck with the rest. Also, whatever cards are in here will be overprinted and any cards not in these will be underprinted, assuming that they do limit the pool, which would be really bad. And they already have products for starter people. I mean, it's arguably a fat pack, a.k.a. bundle. The Deck Builder's Toolkit, which I think is still around. And um, the Planeswalker decks. Oh, and the, the, what do they call those? The Challenger decks. So it's like, why add another one? I mean, that's just like almost confusing people about what to buy. But then again, I could see even extremely experienced players saying, well, for three more dollars... I could get this one and guarantee that they're all on color. I could see people doing that. I could see people buying it. I mean, I might even buy it if I'm like, oh, I just, I'm going to build a white deck. I, I just need a good base. And let's just say that I'm not somebody who opens like 30 boxes because I am. So of course I have all the white cards I need. But if, if, if usually I buy one box or less than that or just singles, I just be like, yeah, I'll buy two of these. Cool. Open it. You practically got half the deck already as far as the support from the lower cards Probably. I mean, would you really whiff if they're all from Dominaria and they're all on color and they're all semi-related? Probably not. And then you might pull a $30 card or a $40 card. I mean, they're not exempt. It's like, yeah, you don't get a foil, so you're not going to hit like an absolute jackpot. But for $6.99, I don't know. I think they'd be pretty popular, but I cannot get over the fact that probably two to three colors are going to get stuck. They're going to just absolutely get stuck. And the store won't be able to get rid of them because, like, right now, who's playing red from Dominaria? Nobody. Red Blue Wizards is garbage. Mono Red Wizards is garbage. The Red Mid Range Goblins is garbage. And if that happens to one other color, that's bad. If it happens to two other colors, there goes profitability. You might have even lost money. So if people just stop in and just clean you out of white and blue, you're in trouble. So it's a money-losing prospect for stores, which is really bad. I mean, that's really, really, really bad. It's the same as Commander, where it was five decks, and now it's four. And the five decks were, you know, you'd get stuck with the, the bottom ones that nobody wanted. It happened all the time. So honestly, no matter how popular the product is, no, no matter how many people, like, buy it, you're still going to get stuck with certain colors. That's just how it's going to work. You're going to have to discount them, liquidate them basically sell them for the same price as like another booster and even then if nobody wants to play red you can put them for a dollar 99 who's gonna want it other than oh i could pull a red mythic that's worth money so i think stores will hate them and customers will like them but they're only gonna buy out the same colors and then the customers will actually kind of end up hating them because the color they want will already be sold out really quickly so unless they let uh, stores order them by color, I just don't see this working in any way. And honestly, if they do let stores uh, buy them and sell them by color, where they just say, send us more white and black. That's what we need, white and black. We're out of those, send us just those. Well, now the white and black rares and mythics and commons, are, or, well, and uncommons, 
are all overprinted effectively because Wizards will run double the amount because if it's print to demand, oh, that's what they're running out of. Cool. That's why they don't do that. I mean, that would devalue like all the white mythics and all the white rares. So j there's just nothing good from a practical standpoint. So if they want to take this questionable new product and throw it to just Walmart, great. But this is a trial run. They're not just, oh, we did this to Walmart at the end. Go buy it if you want. This is like, hey, we're demoing this. And just from a practical standpoint, it won't work. Even if I do personally think it's a pretty good product, it's kind of clever and it's interesting. So overall, I'm kind of on the fence, but I would lean towards no, don't do this. So head down to the comment section. Let me know what you guys think of this, because I'm very curious to see what the rest of the community thinks of this uh, product. And have you bought one? Have you opened it? Was it good? Was it bad? Um, did you see them? What were they priced? Could you verify anything? Any other details? Anything? Put it down in the comment section. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next video.